Okay, I am starting a little late here, but anyway, uh, so this is a brief summary of the working group two uh, summary to policy makers. Uh, it's the climate impacts, uh, adaptation, and vulnerability. Let's start with this one, which is there are a lot of very uh, stylized diagrams in this report. Uh, adaptation tends to be very local, just like all global warming is local, the impacts are local. So the solutions in terms of adapting to what is already happening and what is expected to happen are also going to be local. And a lot of the studies tend to be uh, case studies uh, which uh, are not necessarily transferable solutions, nor is there a blueprint of things that you can move from one place to another uh, very easily or uh, at all. Okay, so keeping that in mind from climate risk to climate resilient development, climate ecosystems including biodiversity and human society as uh, coupled systems. So biodiversity is again very intuitive concept that I think you understand but not necessarily quantitatively defined. Uh, I would like to think of ecosystems as having a complexity which is kind of how many species there are, let's say, in a given ecosystem and the size of the ecosystem may differ, could be coastal, uh, desert, mountain and uh, rainforest or what, savannas, grasslands, etc. Uh, and its resilience, so its ability to recover from perturbations like droughts or floods and wildfires and so on. Uh, and productivity in terms of how uh, much, let's say, carbon is being sequestered by that particular uh, system. But there is no unique definition, so generally enhanced biodiversity is advocated. Uh, maybe in the future it can be related to livelihoods, uh, because will you care how uh, biodiversity is uh, maintained, enhanced, protected, unless it has value for livelihoods. Uh, it gets very complicated, right? So main interactions and trends are shown on this side and options to reduce climate risks and establish resilience are shown on this side as transitioning from here to here requiring uh, from urgent to timely action including governance, finance, knowledge and capacity, catalyzing conditions and technologies. So what do we have? The risk is defined formally as a multiplier of uh, climate hazard, uh, vulnerability and exposure. So I think you know what hazard is in terms of heat waves, again floods, droughts, wildfires, health outcomes, etc. And vulnerability it could be socio-economic, it could be education, It's uh, you know what it is uh, intuitively again, but there are uh, many metrics that can be used to define vulnerability. In India it could be caste system, employment level per capita GDP and so on. And exposure is a combination of things like population density, where you live, what kind of infrastructure is provided to where you live, coastal, mountain, uh, etc., uh, urban slums, and so on and so forth. So together they determine your risks, which are not always independent of uh, vulnerability, for example. So you have climate change causes and impacts, uh, which are uh, translating into impacts on ecosystems, including biodiversity. So there are limits to adaptation, uh, losses and damages involved there. Uh, but you can uh, enhance these to provide uh, livelihoods and ecosystem services back to human society, which itself is also impacted by climate change and of course causing climate change uh, as well. So there are limits to adaptation and losses and damages involved there as well, which then uh, human society then uh, also impacts ecosystem, including biodiversity, uh, sometimes exacerbated by climate change like deforestation, reliance on coastal ecosystems, fisheries or exploitation and so on and so forth. Uh, but human society can adapt or maladapt and mitigate climate change. Maladaptation examples do exist in terms of let's say moving people from one flood prone area into another area which is 
prone to another hazard or uh, more sea level rise and inundation and so on. And of course we can also negatively impact greenhouse gas emissions and uh, enhance climate change. Uh, so adaptation and mitigation, adapt, uh, adapting to and mitigating ecosystem including biodiversity can help and conserve, uh, conserves and uh, human society can conserve and restore ecosystem uh, uh, biodiversity uh, as well. Okay, so this is uh, where we already are, let's say. We're doing all these things, uh, mostly in this direction and in this direction, but also trying to correct ourselves. But for future climate change, limiting global warming is the main target. So human society, uh, human system uh, transitions in terms of uh, societal, energy, industry, urban, rural and infrastructure are expected to uh, allow us to adapt to and mitigate uh, future climate change and reduce impacts. You can see here this is a red thick arrow, this is a gray uh, thin arrow and uh, we can also reduce our impact through climate change mitigation and adaptation on ecosystems and transitions on land, freshwater, coastal and ocean ecosystems, so ecosystems and their biodiversity. Again, reduce our impacts here, conserve, restore, so ecosystem-based approaches, which again uh, sounds very nice theoretically, uh, like for example, if you are fishing for tuna, then you look at the uh, food web in which tuna lives and you don't just catch tuna but you try to manage the tuna ecosystem as a whole. Practically speaking, that's not always been easy. Nonetheless, uh, it is a very valuable concept like ecosystem services. Forest is very valuable, but how much will you pay to protect it, restore it and manage it? That's not always clear. Uh, nonetheless, ecosystem transitions can uh, offer provisions in terms of livelihoods, ecosystem services. There is that buzzword again. So there have been values put on ecosystem services, but not always easy to incentivize people to uh, protect them. So. Uh, there is adaptation to and mitigation of ecosystem transitions to help uh, reduce uh, or limit global warming as well. Uh, obviously through afforestation, additional carbon sequestration, uh, managed agriculture with forestation uh, to reduce emissions, uh, natural based, nature based solutions for uh, contribution to net zero and so on and so forth. So this is kind of a stylized face uh, uh, space of options to reduce climate risk and establish climate resilience and head towards climate resilient development which protects human health well-being, equity, justice and uh, ecosystem health as well as planetary health. So planetary health is a concept now where it is pretty much um, argued that uh, environmental health and planetary health cannot be uh, degraded uh, while maintaining human health. In other words, they all have to go together that human health is very intimately tied to ecosystem health and planetary health. Again, not precisely defined but intuitively uh, very well understood, let's say. Okay, so there are the uh, detailed uh, uh, um, captions that I will not go through. The impacts of climate change are observed uh, in many ecosystems and human systems worldwide. I would like to spend some time on this, so let me stop this first podcast there and do this as a separate podcast. Uh, this is uh, already nine minutes long anyways, but you get the idea that uh, adaptation, for those who remember early on in the IPCC assessment reports, adaptation was not discussed. There was a lot of hesitation to discuss it because um, it was considered as a way to admit that we have failed to m m uh, reduce our impact and emissions on climate and mitigation would be the way to go. Uh, but it's by now obvious that many of the climate change impacts are already here and adaptation uh, which is lots of times empirical like how farmers respond to uh, rainfall trends or extreme events, uh, how people ad uh, adjust to increasing heat waves and so on. Uh, but 
considering that warming is already here with more than a degree since 1850, uh, especially in the last decade accelerating warming, um, adaptation is now not something that we can avoid discussing. And in this report, uh, feasible adaptation options are discussed and their synergy with mitigation are discussed and uh, compatibility with uh, sustainable development goals also are considered. So adaptation is now very much part of the discussion for IPCC assessment reports, which is very different from the way it was when it started in the 1990s. Okay, so let's come back to the impacts in the uh, next podcast.